Hollywood. Seven nights at Hollywood, what it is, what it do. Since Bobby Yeagan, Curtis Ennis, know that we've been loyal even when we wasn't winning. A trusted source for the news. Seven nights at Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to 79th and Hallis. This is episode 234, man. You guys, Scott and Flows, you know to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Flows and Delini at Barbchair Scott. Follow the Barbershare Network at Barbershare Net on Twitter and Instagram, man. Uh, subscribe to Patreon, man. Patreon.com backslash Barbershare Network so you can hear this episode when as soon as it drops instead of waiting till mid Monday. Uh, for the episodes of dropping, of course, you want everything else with some sessions. All I'm not gonna hold you content, that's where you need to go, man. Uh, we are back. Uh, it's been like what 10 days since the last time we recorded because, uh, something like it's that. Been, yeah, it's been about it's been something like that. It's the last time we recorded, it's been a minute. Uh, last time we recorded was like right after the trade deadline, so it was before the Saints game, and it was before, um, the last game we just saw, man. So we're back. Um, you were at the game on Thursday. Uh, you were tired. I saw. I, I could tell from the post game video you were exhausted. Yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me, uh, kind of from what I saw on TV. Of course, we knew people who were there. Uh, Jr. Bang was there. There was a couple other people I knew who were there. It seemed like the energy was still high for a team that is as sorry as the Bears. Yeah, it wasn't like it was dead in Soldier Field. It was very much jumping. You know, people doing their usual thing. We had tailgating at the beginning. Uh, parking lot was full. The stadium was didn't fill as quickly, and I assume it's because a lot of people were coming off of work, and it's not like a typical Sunday where, you know, you know that's happened to set aside. Um, but within 10 minutes of the game starting, like actual 10 minutes, I game 10 minutes, it filled up. Um, fans were excited to win. I mean, it don't really matter if you have been winless on the, the season. A win is still feels good to fans. So, yeah, it was, it was still cracking. So it's like, so what I want to talk about today, we're really going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff that really don't have nothing to do with the actual game we watched on Thursday. Um, I only saw half of it because the Loki finale was out. And uh, we will be talking about that on the upcoming cinema with the guys. Have you seen the Marvels yet? I don't think you've watched it yet. Yeah, I saw the Marvels. <laughs> oh, you saw it? You saw it already? Okay, we'll talk about that this week on uh, on um, cinema with the guys. So check that on Patreon. But Justin Fields, Justin Fields, um, every all the news has been coming from in the everybody in the Chicago Bears media circle that it seems like he will be all signs of go for this upcoming Sunday against Detroit. Of course, we'll get that officially confirmed when Flues talks to the media probably on Monday and Tuesday, and we'll see what his practice status is like. Yeah. But it seems like if this game was on a Sunday, if it was today, then he would have actually played. Yeah. Um I, for one, am tired of watching T- Tyson Bajan. Uh, like I said, no disrespect to Tyson. He's doing, he's an undrafted rookie. Yeah. You know, he, he's for what his draft, for, for, for what he is, he played a pretty okay four games. In my yeah. personal, if you take away the narrative surrounding it. But I am tired of watching him. I am ready to watch Justin Fields these final seven games. Um, with the Cardinals winning today, uh, the Bears have a little breathing room right now. The number yeah. one draft pick. Uh, I was talking about this in a group chat today before I give my take on it. Do you think there's anything that Justin can do over these next seven games to be here next year and be a starter? Statistically, he just have to go, you know, very much positive. I mean, he's sitting there, what, 11 touchdowns, six interceptions. Um, he'd have to get 20, you know, total and probably keep his interceptions at that area you know, 10 or less and, you know, just mix in some, some good signal calling, some good um, operational standards. Like, you know, he needs to be able to get balls out quick when it calls for it. You know, if it's a screen, if it's a, a quick check down, the ball needs to come out and get to the player and not have to be something they have to make an additional catch for some effort. Um, Operationally, if he gets that down and then sort of speed up that internal clock, um, if he does that, then yeah, I could see him staying around next year because he does have seven games. That's a lot of film to lot. put, Almost put together. Season. You know what I'm saying? If you uh, you know, you getting close to two touchdowns a game, you can get that 20 touchdown passing. But yeah, he has some work cut out ahead for him. And then of course you look at the quarterbacks who are right now in you know in college football. And they're not really doing too hot. You know, I've seen nothing 
game breaking. Maybe Bo Nix. Bo Nix had a really good game of his life yesterday against. Yeah, but nobody's drafted him that day. Uh, Washington. Um, but as of right now, you know, looking at the Michael Penix, uh, was it Washington? Who did Oregon play? Yeah, Oregon played USC. Right? Oregon played USC yesterday. Washington played. Uh, was it? Was it Utah? Utah? Did they win or lose? They won. They won. Uh, Michael Penix had a solid game. Um, Trake May. I want to say they won too. Not yeah, all. they won last minute game winning two point conversion by Drake May. He struggled though against fucking Duke. You know, and then you know stuff like that. And then you know, uh, Caleb Williams has just been pedestrian for quite some time now, and so that's number one pick. Uh, that number one pick, uh, which was like cemented around him at the beginning of the year. You start thinking, ah, I could take other people with that pick. You know, the first person that comes to mind would be someone like Marvin Harrison Jr. So, you know, I uh, I do think with the fact that the quarterback play of college football is starting to, if not down, but evening out, I think it gives Justin a bit more breathing room for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it gives him a little more breathing room too. I think that if we have eyes and we're watching Caleb and Drake, I think that these general managers, as much as we talk shit about uh, Ryan Poles, he has a. I, I, I would have to say yes. He, he has better football out of me. I never played the fucking game, so yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give him the benefit of that on that. So if I can see these motherfuckers ain't like that, I'm pretty sure he sees that. You would um, think that, but not necessarily. I would hope. I would yeah, hope. You would hope. I would that. hope. Yeah, I will hope he sees that. Um, but I think this is a legitimate opportunity for Justin. I think he has seven games to really fight for his supper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got a game this upcoming Sunday against the Detroit Lions. And, you know, I, I expect the Lions to win, but it's also a division game. And that defense ain't been looking as great lately. Last couple games, last couple, last couple if we want to find some kind of chink in the armor. I mean, they're still yeah. a great team. They're 7-2. and two. I think that they're the... Second best team, actually, they're probably they're probably still third. I probably still take Philly and and, and the Niners over them, but yeah. they're number three in the in the NFC, and I think that they can actually uh, put a damper on uh, a a rematch between the Niners and the, and the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. Because yeah. any team any team that can spoil the party in the NFC, it would be them. But if there's any chink in the armor, it will be the defense. Uh, even on the defensive line, there's only one dude getting pressure. That's uh, you know, Hutchinson, you know, if you, if you look at it like that, the Bears offensive I, line. I, I, I think it's a team effort for them, though. I just think he he ends up it's getting a team the, effort, but I mean, nobody jumps off the page like him. Okay, is what I'm gotcha, saying. Gotcha. And I feel this offensive line, the Bears has much better since Justin has been hurt because they've yep. been healthy. Darnell Wright looks amazing like he has all year. Um, Tevin Jenkins, this dude here is a freaking stud when he's fucking healthy. Um, we're gonna see if Nate Davis is gonna play. You know, yeah. Braxton Jones is 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 not good to me. I call him uh, you know, he's not good at all, but he's been better than the other guy who's playing before him. So there's been more of a dedication to it. I feel like if the Bears, if Luke gets that says we're gonna keep running the football, yeah, like just because Justin Hill is not a, abandon this running game that's been working for you. You True. know what I'm saying? Keep running football. I think they'll have a chance. Then you play against the uh the the uh Minnesota Vikings, which both of us will be back. That'll be our first game back. Neither one of us will be in Detroit next week. Uh, I'll be in Detroit. Mon- oh, you're going? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were going. Well, he'll be in Detroit. Yeah, so I'll be in Detroit. I'm I had no idea, up, brother. I had no idea. Well, he'll be in Detroit. But that'll be that'd be the next that's the next game that both of us will be back. Uh on Monday Night Football. Uh that game's not getting flexed. I don't know if you've seen Joshua Dobbs, he's been hooping. And not only that, it's a division game with Justin back. That's something you can sell. So he has an opportunity, and then even after that, if you look at the Bears' schedule after that, it gets, you know, probably as light as you wanted to get. Well, not really light as you wanted to get. After that, uh, you play the Lions again, but this time at home. You play the Cleveland Browns. Big win today, but I'm not – that offense don't, don't scare me. It just, it just really does. Now, that defense Lions? is – not about the Browns. Oh, okay. No, no, of course not. Now, that Browns' defense might be the best in the NFL. I, I don't know. It's, it's up there. Uh, Miles Garrett is a – Fucking grown man. Then you got yeah. the Fal- then you got the Cardinals, the Falcons, and then the weak ass Packers. There's a chance here for anything for Ju- for Justin Fields to show that he can be the guy. So I, I think it's a lot riding on these seven games. Um, what do you think about game plan wise? As you know, what's going on with this? As I'm gonna get my groceries because we're very transparent with y'all on the Barbershop Network, and he's gonna explain this. <laughs> well, I, I think the biggest thing that when it comes to Justin and his development um, 
with, of course, them playing the rest of the last season games, unless the last seven games, the biggest things for Justin is he needs to get the ball out quickly. What I mean quickly is you snap the ball. If it's a bubble screen, snap, throw. It doesn't need snap, step, step, throw. Snap, one fluid motion. If it's one thing I gave Tyson Bajant credit for was operationally, he knew what he was doing. And that's not really shocking when you're – when you consider the fact that he came into Shepherd uh, College or Shepherd University and started every game throughout his time there, he was a starter, remained the starter. Those four years, it was his team. It makes sense as to the fact that he had experience. He knows I snap, I throw, I snap, I throw, I snap, I throw. You just get it going. There is no, ooh, snap, move here, who here. No, you just snap and throw. Um, now, the thing that Justin excels at tight window passes, accuracy. Uh, Tyson Bajan may have struggled with those things, and it could be the speed of the NFL, the openness of NFL receivers. But Justin, uh, but Tyson still, of course, was reading fast, progressing fast, getting through, even if the balls didn't get there in a timely fashion. And for Justin to show management and to show even Bears fans, if he can be this person next year, that has to be fixed. You know, Justin can make the big plays, you know, he can make the big throws. But can he do the simple things? And I think the really tough thing for Justin was the fact that it was tough for him to do the simple things. And then, and if he does that, I think undoubtedly he will remain. But of course, it's always different when you are saying this and you're not in a position of authority with the team. And I do know that, unfortunately, with the Bears and with NFL teams, period, they make things a lot harder than it should be. So we'll see. And Scott just arrived. Yes, I had to just throw all the stuff that needs to go in the freezer in there real quick. But let's talk about uh, a guy who, who has been only here for two games and I feel has been making a big impact, Montez Sweat. Um, yeah. He had the most pressures that a Bears uh, defensive lineman has had against a quarterback since Robert Quinn in 2020 had eight quarterback pressures. The fact that it took those niggas, these niggas three years to get eight quarterback pressures this tells you how fucking bad the offensive line, I mean, the defensive line has been since then, which yeah. is mind boggling me. Because one thing the Bears have always had in their existence, and in, in my entire time as a fan, post 2019, yeah, and I mean, it's, they're going to have a good defensive line. Like, yeah. always, that was never the issue. So that's something that was shocking to me. I mean, I'll say this about Tez, man. It's only been two games, but to me, he's worth every dollar. First of all, like, even if I don't really care about, Oh, you're paying them a lot. It's contracts and not just the NFL, but in sports are all about market value. It has nothing to do with the player. All do with market value. Is Zach Levine worth $238 million? Absolutely the fuck not. But if that's what the market said he's worth, that's what he's worth. Yeah. Montez Sweat is going out there and he has been a man possessed. And this is a guy who hasn't had a training camp. He's only had probably maybe three or four actual real practices with this team. It was a short week, so I'm pretty sure majority of last week was actually walkthroughs. Yeah, he's coming in, and you're already seeing the impact it's having on other guys. Justin Jones actually got a sack last week, and a guy who we love, we've been preaching this guy, we've been singing this guy's song all season. Yannick Ngakwe is yeah. a good guy. He was showing stuff even before Montez. Now you got Montez, he's really free to work. That's a guy who I want back here next year. I want yeah. Yannick back next year. Yeah. Um, do you change? Have you changed your mind? Have you changed your stance on how you feel about Montez and that contract? Well, yeah, I said that in our off field, in our on field video after the game. That I think I'll say I'm wrong. It was a good decision. Yes, it's a second round, but you saw his impact immediately. He gets to the quarterback, knows how to use his size, knows how to use his quickness. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. All right, I think that you know, this is something where now you can have something to build it. I think when you're a team like the Bears, you gotta start looking at building blocks. You know what I'm saying? You got to start looking at building blocks. And the offensive line, I believe right now, you have two guys who, health permitting, you got your two star wars you can build around. Jenkins and, and Darnell Wright. And if you get Olu from Penn State, nigga, add him. And when Nate Davis is actually playing, he's been good. To me, you're starting to get stuff on the offensive line. Yeah. So if you get a guy like Tez uh, on the defensive line, and you got him locked in for the next four or five years, you can have – Yo, Yannick Ngagwe isn't a star. He's not gonna be the 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 the, the Kobe to his Shaq or things like that. But he can be a solid dude. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He can come out there and do what he want to do. If you put more dogs on that line, he's just gonna be even more deadly. Yeah. I want motherfucking uh, 
Justin Jones off this team regardless. I'm not being fooled by that sack last week yeah. against uh, the one the probably the worst offense in football. And I feel bad for Bryce, man. On, 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 a, on a Panthers note, it looks very similar to year one Justin, where they just leave my man hanging. I do not yeah. think it's a it's amount of talent. We can sit up here and talk about his height. I think the kid is good. He's just in a shitty, shitty situation. Even yeah. worse, I said this today, man. Look, we I have my issues with Ryan Poles on a professional level. I don't have any beef with him, you know. I don't know the dude personally. I only met him a couple times. But on a professional level, I got my, my question on how he's been running the team, but he robbed the fucking Panthers blind. Yeah. I mean blind. And so if you look at what's going on with defensive line, I think they're finally starting to get some pieces. And, and on the other side of it, I'm gonna take it to the secondary, Kyler Gordon, man. Kyler Gordon, eight tackles, started to look a little better. Now, shout out our guy. Uh, young Blaster on Twitter, he's you know, he's a Kyler guy. He's like, y'all need to give him credit. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna give credit for the shit he need to be doing. Was were you impressed by Kyler, or is this just like? No, oh, I was I impressed. Need- no, some good one on one coverage, some good pass deflections. Uh, look like he was holding his own. No, absolutely impressed. I I think it, it's cool. It's something to build on, but I need to yeah. see more. I just really want to see from all these guys. And I said the same thing about Jaquan Brisker. Jaquan, now me and you have our different opinions on Jaquan. I think Jaquan's good, but he's Bears good. Uh, now, I understand. I'm not going to get on him because he got burned at the safety. Like, safeties aren't really meant to be the best people who are like, you know, cause most of them get do get burned if they're only even on the side of receiver to begin with. But I just need to see more. I think we look at, 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 at Jaquan as like he has good on court, on field swag. So it's mm-hmm. like we look at, like, oh, he's, he's really good. Like, no, he just dresses cool when he's on the fucking field. Like, <laughs> how many plays does this nigga really make? Yeah. So, you see stuff like that, and it's like, okay, you're slowly starting to put together a good secondary too, but you have to pay Jalen Johnson, yeah. I believe. I don't have any faith in I think Tyreek's young, and he'll be he's not that I haven't been not that I haven't been displeased with anything Tyreek's doing, but he's way too aggressive. You know, you gotta get that knocked out. But I don't believe in him enough or Terrell Smith to just let uh, Jalen Johnson walk out the fucking door. What, what do you no. think about the rest of the, the secondary? Besides no. Eddie Jackson, who he's family man records is calling. No, nah, yeah, Eddie Jackson. I, I, I thank him for his service to the Bears. I thank him for the years that he has, the exciting plays, but nah, nah, it's over for him. Uh, it's just, that's, you know, that's a part of the game. You age out of it. Um, and in any other career, you age out too. It's just a part of it. Well, not that you age out, but you is eventually where you retire. The NFL happens to be the sport the league where it just happens very fast. And that's for sports in general. Um, in terms of the secondary, I do not have enough faith in Terrell and, and, and what you call it, uh, Tyreek to let Jalen go. And then why let someone go who is doing spectacularly, who is a great one-on-one cover, one of the best in the league. You got Montez Sweat because Montez Sweat was solid and he was the best available. You have someone who's the best available. Keep him. It doesn't make sense to that. He's still young. Keep him, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I do not understand the mentality to not get him a contract right now. That is a building block. And now for something personal, you don't think he's a locker room fit? That's different, but yeah. Which we haven't heard anything about that. Every time no. I run to Jalen, Jalen cool as hell. Yeah. You know, Jalen, I have, I have Jalen, Jalen gave me one of my funny quotes uh, during doing a training camp when he had to do rag up. And I was the only nigga with me and her, but the only motherfuckers who answered when he's like, you know what this is. But uh, I, I want to ask this question. I don't know if we talked about this last week. And if I did, fuck it, we're just going to the next topic. But we argued about this one. I'm not going to hold you probably like a week ago. Do you think the Bears passed up on Bryce Young? I'm not Bryce Young, on CJ Stroud. Like, by definition, do you think they passed up on him? No. You pass up on someone when you're looking for that position. Right. You're looking for that position and you over you overlook them. You know, it's like if the Bears had the number one pick and they selected Justin and didn't select Trevor Lawrence, you'd be like, ah, you tweaked. Even though I don't think Trevor Lawrence is that great, you would say you uh-huh. passed up. We're getting that tomorrow. I'm not going to hold you. We, we, we taking that nigga to the shit. You know what I'm saying? You would say he passed up. But to say you passed up on someone that a position you weren't even looking in, you know, going into your third year, going to his third year, the second real year in the offense, no, no, that's that would be foolish to say you passed up on C.J. Stroud. On top of that, you know, as, as, as great as C.J. Stroud is, he was a good quarterback he, in uh, in uh, in college at Ohio State. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't doing what Bryce Young was doing. Bryce Young was no, doing, exactly. Bryce Young was a world beater in college. You know, yeah, you know, it's not if Caleb Williams was doing what Bryce Young was doing in college, I would say pick up him. I would say pick him up immediately. And that's the thing, Bryce. Not even, let's call it. Caleb. Not even doing what Bryce was doing last year. 
no. That, that's that's the same thing. And it's like we are we argue about this because well, Heisman winners, of course, but still. I mean, obviously won a Heisman, but you know what I mean. You, you know what I mean. I'm saying they but, both have a Heisman to their to their yeah. their record, but well, I I'm thought Bryce Young in his season, last year. Yeah. Bryce Young in his last year was still doing much better, and I'm going to double check that. Um, was still doing much better than what Kata was doing. Yeah, his last year, I mean, he's throwing 32 touchdowns, five picks. The year before, 47 and seven. Um, of course, we look at Caleb because Caleb was putting ungodly numbers last year. I mean, he threw like how many touchdowns did he threw? That's 42 and five. Was near the same thing. But I think he also rushed for a crap ton of yards. Let's double check that. Yeah, he rushed for like 10 yards and 10 touchdowns, and he rushed for 11 this year. So looking at 52 total touchdowns. But Bryson, you know, similar thing. On top of that, Bryce was also a champion. He was a, uh, a, a national champion. And you just kind of – he's he wasn't doing what Bryce was doing. I said to say that. Yeah, and I think when we were – what you know, shout out to Mikey. Mikey was arguing this on the show, and a lot of Bears fans were arguing this too. Well, it's Ryan P- Poe's job. He's a evaluator. I'm like, how much evaluation did Ryan Poe's actually do last year? Like, the yeah. DJ Moore trade happened very early. Like, I remember when it happened. I was on a set working when it happened. So this was like first or second week of March. Yeah. Almost two months before the fucking draft started. So it's not like Ryan Poe's did that much research on, on either one of them. I feel like it was pretty much – I don't think there was ever a part when they from the minute that Lovey Smith said fuck the Texans, which honestly the Texans you know it didn't bother them regardless. That it, it did not matter whatsoever. And I got a question: Is Will Anderson Jr. hurt, or is this nigga just mid this year? I ain't heard his name one goddamn time. Oh, uh, like I just I literally I was watching the game and I'm like, I haven't heard what the fuck happened to Will Anderson. Remember they he was drafted, they went traded up to get him. I haven't no, heard his he, name at all. Playing. He just got two sacks on the year. That's about it. So even mid, that's interesting. Um, but um, I think that to me, like there wasn't really any. I don't think there was ever a point for the moment they got the number one draft pick. Ryan Poe seriously thought about trading Justin Fields. He had to play his hand so he can get a, get a good deal, and he got an amazing deal. You got a number one wide receiver, and you got a number one draft pick. Which what we said at the, at the draft, even before, even though we've expected Justin to play better than he's played, we all said this is an amazing contingency plan. Yeah, so I don't think there was ever an actual quarterback, you know, they they ever did any real research into it. And even if let's just say they let's play devil's advocate and say that they did, CJ wasn't doing what Bryce was doing last year. No, like I feel like Bryce was consensus number one draft pick last year, and I feel like if yeah. the Bears or even the the Panthers would have took CJ, it'd have been like ah, CJ was good, but I don't know about all that. Yeah. I think that CJ Stroud is just one of them guys, and Bears fans didn't stop. Thinking that everything the Bears just fuck up, which 98% of the shit they do fuck up. But in this particular situation, and the only reason I say that they passed up on Patrick Mahomes is because we actually read the story that the Bears yeah. actually researched him, had him at Hallis three different times, and told him that you're gonna be our guy. That's why that's why when I asked Patrick Mahomes, you like you like that uh that Hollywood. When I asked Patrick Mahomes, like not only did Pat answer me, he had a he, he had a dead ass glare in his face. Like, yeah, he gave me the Kobe death stare. And even when I talked to him after, I was like, man, uh, it was good to talk to you. Thanks for the answer to the question. He was like, yeah, this what up. He said, I really don't like them. Like, like that's what he was saying, bro. Like, that's he don't fuck with them. So, like, they obviously they promised him something. So yeah. that's why I say the Bears passed up on Patrick Mahomes. They didn't pass up on CJ Stroud. No. No, no, that, that 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 just doesn't make sense. If you're not yeah. looking at that position, how can you pass up on it? You can say, "Wow, if they were considering that position, they did, they should have looked at him," but they weren't. So no, that didn't yeah. doesn't make sense. Let's talk about the uh, the flucer, uh, Matt Eberflus, or is uh, Rich Eyes always says Eberflus. Uh, the Bears have now tied their wins for all of last season. They only won three games last year, and they've won three games so far, and they got seven more games left. Um, I, I think this is, I feel like this whisper is starting to get louder in, in Bears media circles, um, where, you know, people have been talking about it, about Eva Flus is probably going to, it might be back next year. Like, unless yeah. anything short of them going on seven the rest of the way, sounds like they're starting to get back. Cap is starting to hear that. Shout out our guy, Adam Johns. He wrote a great article in the athletic that spoke on that. Um, I even think Brad Biggs even kind of talked about a little bit in his, in his big top 10 things. Mm. And so. These things are starting to get loud, and we talked about this on I'm Not Gonna Hold You on Friday. I said, I think if they get five wins, he's staying. And I know a lot of Bears fans got mad at me when I said, oh, I don't want to hear what Ryan Poe said about him 
a week or two ago, or whenever they got Montez Sweat, and someone was like, that's just GM speak. I'm like, it's the difference between GM speak and confident votes of confidence. Yeah, you can GM speak and not really give somebody a vote of confidence. They did that with yeah. Justin all process up to the DJ Moore trades. We've heard yeah. Ryan Poles do that. Yeah. That was, oh, I really fuck with this nigga. Like, I felt like a tear was going to come to this nigga's face. Now, me and you, I text you today like, yo, I want Justin on this team. You know that mean? Like, if I got to bite the flu's bullet, it is what it is. What do you think about flu's job security? Do you think there's that, that, that there's, a, there's a growing chance that he's going to be back next year? I mean, I, I looked at it. Well, when you were gone, I said how, you know, I you can't trust the Bears to do competent things. And knowing them, I would not be shocked if he was back. Would I make that decision or would a competent GM make that decision? No. I mean, you're winless against the division. You say it, you're going to take and never give back. You're inept when it comes to offense and being Which is modern. hilarious, man. You have been dead last in the league in most offensive categories. Why would I bring you back now? If you went seven and zero and won ten games, like oh well, yeah, sure, but five or six just wouldn't cut it. It would have to be eight, nine, which is near. You're going undefeated in these next couple of weeks, so I wouldn't be shocked. But I would probably, I would say no, but I wouldn't be shocked. That would be my initial observation so basically your answer is your realistic answer what you would do you wouldn't bring him back at all but what you think they're gonna do is he probably will bring him back i'm with you yeah probably i, I don't think if i was the general manager of the chicago bears first of all i wouldn't hire the motherfucker to begin with let's let's get that very clear uh i still can't believe mike mcdane was in even get a fucking interview but anyway uh <laughs> what i would do he wouldn't there's nothing he would do i saw outside of going seven and oh or like six and one yeah. for me to bring him back but I think the question here, and we've been talking about this, me and you've been talking about this, me and Bang have been talking about this, and I'm not going to hold you. The question is Kevin Warren. We don't know what Ke- what's going on in Kevin Warren's head in them bunk suits. We have no <laughs> fucking idea. We don't know if he's like, I'm not fucking with this. Like, we, we get the shots of him in the press box when they're losing and shit like that. He's not happy. We don't know really what his relationship with Ryan Poles is. Ryan Poles was brought in a whole year before him. You know what I'm saying? Is Ryan Poles' guy? Is Kevin Warren going to be, oh, I want to bring my staff in? Like, really, we got to know, is Ryan, is Kevin Warren the the uh, the new type of Bears G, new type of Bears executive, or is the same old, same old? And I feel like if he lets uh, Ryan Poles not only keep his job, mm-hmm. but also allow him to keep Eberflus, then I feel like then it's just business as usual and there's nothing to be changed. Now, if he goes out there and goes scorched earth, to me, that's real. Oh, this is a new era right here because we've yeah. never seen no shit like that. Yeah. I, me and you, of course, would do a, saying the same thing on Twitter today about the Lions, about how it took them so many, so many coaches for them to realize, oh, this is so what we GMs need. Too. GMs too. This is what we need. These are the players we need. This is the coaching we need to turn this around. And now, like you said, they look like a top three team in the NFC. In my opinion, a top three team in the league. That's just my opinion because I you I, got I, a top three in the league. I don't believe in anybody in the AFC outside of the Chiefs. That. Outside of the Chiefs, and I um I would it would probably be no order Eagles, Chiefs, Lions. That would be my personal decision. 49ers. I still need to see them do it in the playoffs. That's like, will they take the step? The Eagles have been there. The Chiefs have won. The Niners have been great in the regular season for years, but will they take that? Whereas the Lions just look good defensively. Of course, they gave a lot of points today. That being said, I still think that's just Justin Herbert and who he is. I believe the uh, Chargers would also be better than a better coach, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, I would have them either top three, top four, top five in the league. I think that's just an easy call to make. But that took a culture change. It took a coach, a coach who knows the game, who understands office, and then who also is not afraid to take risk going for that fourth down, that completion you saw Jared Goff make. That's that's big move, he, big he play move. You know what I'm saying? We're seeing Eberflus do that these past weeks. Well, my like, yeah, but the season's basically over. Will you do that when you're seven and two like they were eight and two? I don't know if they are now, but when you do seven that, and two now, when, yeah. you, when you do that when you're seven and two, and so that that that's the that's the difference between a good head coach and a. Yeah. Well, we 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 gonna see. I feel like all this is riding on Kevin Warren. We gonna see what kind of executive he is. And quiet as I'm gonna keep bringing this up because nobody's talking about this. When the last time you heard about the damn stadium? I'm gonna keep bringing this up. In a minute, I'm, I keep bringing this up. Like nobody's bringing it up. We haven't heard shit. No updates about the new stadium, like, at all. 
And he's supposed to be taking care of that shit too. So that's just something that's peculiar peculiar to me. I'm really looking forward to that postseason uh press conference. We're gonna get the same regurgitated Ted Phillips uh McCaskey press conference, or is this gonna be a new era and Kevin Warren comes within that bunk suit and starts firing people like Mr. McMahon? Like that, that's what I'm gonna be interested to see. Um, last topic. Moving on to the Detroit Lions, we've been talking about them. The Bears' next game will be against Detroit next Sunday in Ford Field. Joe will be there. Uh, of course, their division rivals, the Bears lost to them twice last year. Uh, the first one, the Bears lost a very close one, 31 to 30 at home. That was one of the many games where Justin Fields was looking elite, but the defense uh, gave up the draws towards the end, and then Justin threw a back break in Jay Cutler like interception to his uh, fellow Oklahoma, fellow Ohio State. Oh, my bad, my f- fellow Ohio State. Uh, I got Jeff Okuda. Um, so and then in the second game, we were there, both of us. That was an yeah. ass whooping on beat on the day, yeah, 41 to 10. Uh, what's your feeling going into this game? I think we're all expecting Justin to be back now. No, not no, no, not no official confirmation. We won't know till this week, but I say all signs are pointing to just feel making return on Sunday. What are you feeling about this game coming up? Um, I'm not expecting too much just because it's a big ramp performance. What three games off? I don't know how many games it's been. Yeah, a month. Um, been most games he's missed in the league. So I'm interested to see how after after all this time, how he fits into this, how he flows within the game, how the rhythm he gets. So I'm not expecting too much, but you know, I still like to see the confidence be there, and I like to see the operational things be there. Yeah, I'm expecting nothing. It's just because the Bears are Chicago sports. I'm expecting nothing. The only thing I expect now from Chicago sports is to be disappointed and for Conor Bedard to be keep kicking niggas' asses. What, what did Jay Z? What did Jay Z say when when Young Chris was rapping on? Uh, He's only 18. That's how I feel every time I watch Conor Bedard. Like Conor Bedard is just fucking ridiculous, bro. Like my friends who know hockey better than me were like. He's the best prospect in a long time. Like he is ridiculous. And bro, I see him play, and I go, agent calling him in seventh grade, bro. And then I see him in the goals he makes, the angles he takes. How he, it's like his 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 goal and the way he uses his, the stick does not. It's, there's no sort of tail to it. He just yeah. it's a flick. And like, how do you react to something you can't predict where it's going? He's he's gifted. He he he's him. Uh, is it back to back multi game multi uh, goals? He has he has nine goals already. Just. in thirteen games, he's on a fifty six goal pace. And some of I'm before I before when I first started hearing about him. Before the what Black Hawks even got the number one draft pick, it was hockey LeBron, hockey LeBron. This is some LeBron shit. This yeah. is dropping 25 points on the fucking Kings in your first game type shit. So that's the only thing I count for in sports. I would be disappointed by, by everybody not named Connor Bedard. But I will say about this game. What about I'm the intrigued. socks? You got the moves the socks are making? Fuck them. Uh, our, our free agency on I'm Not Gonna Hold You, me, Joe, Dante, and Mikey. Details soon next week. Because we 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 taking our talents elsewhere, but um, I'm intrigued. I will say yeah. this: I'm intrigued for a couple reasons. One, it's a division game, and I feel mm-hmm. like with division games, even even all the times that we lost to the Packers, a lot of them were close games because of the division games. You know what I'm saying? They're They're division game. Their division beat. No, I'm not. That could happen. That could happen. But let, let me let me give a little positive spin on it. We could very much get waxed. Would that not you shock very me. Much get waxed. You, well, you, okay, you fucked up a couple times too. Let let me live. Uh, they could I, they could get waxed. That's that is a hundred percent possibility yeah. that we sitting up here a week from now and them niggas lost 38 to 13. High mm-hmm. possibility. I'm just saying I'm intrigued because of how I feel like there's more bodies on this team compared to when Justin was playing. The True. offensive line is a lot more healthy. The running game is going better because Deontay Foreman's been playing like I've been screaming since fucking training camp. I feel like I was the only nigga screaming if I was in all camp, I was like. He's having the best camp. Him and DJ Moore were having the best camp. And I feel like nobody was hearing me. So the fact that he was just like inactive for like six games, I just couldn't believe it. And yeah. so you add that and you add with Khalil Herbert coming back. You add with Roshan Johnson. You can have a three game, three head running game. You know what I'm saying? The offensive line has been better. I'm not expecting Justin to do great. He's been off a month. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's been off. Of, this is the most games he's missed in his NFL career. And then we don't, we still don't know how greatly he can grip the football. So I'm not saying it's going to be great, but the defense has been better. You know what I'm saying? The, the secondary is more healthy. So I feel like there's a chance for it to be close. I'm not picking on a win at all, but I do think there's a chance for this game to be close. And so that's why I'm slightly intrigued, but I'm still going to take 
the Detroit Lions. This is very clear. I'm taking the Detroit. Lions. Actually, I'm taking. I think the Bears are gonna lose the next three. If I want to be 100 honest. I think they're gonna lose to Detroit at, at, on the road. They're gonna lose to Minnesota in Minnesota, and they're gonna lose to Detroit at home again. I think they're. I think they're gonna get two more wins, and it's gonna come either against the Cleveland Browns, the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons and the Green Bay Packers. They're going to get two out of those final four, in my personal opinion. That's, That's fair. But they're losing these next three. Yeah, That's I how so I feel too. about this game. Yeah, I think the Lions are going to smoke them. Josh Dobbs is going to go nuclear again. Um, yeah, the next three for sure. And then the, the Lions again are going to beat the crap out of them again. Um, but once again, as I've said all year, everything is off the table. when it, Every prediction of a loss is off the table if Justin is taking a, a step. Yeah, he exactly. has to take the step, and yeah. I would assume he doesn't as much as I want him to. But you know, the buck I buck curse was broke with CJ. I don't care anymore. You know, do what you, do what you I want. mean, I I'm a Justin fan, and obviously not a big as a, as a Bears fan. Obviously, for me, it's all about the logo on the front, on the, on, the, on the side of the helmet, more than there's a player that wears it. But I'm a Justin guy. I've liked Justin since I saw him on QB one before he became a Bears quarterback. I remember watching that uh, championship game against Clemson and that ridiculous throw he had to Chris Olave. And I was just like, I would love that on my team. Who knew that would be my fucking quarterback a month or two or two, three months later. So I've been a fan of his for a long time. So do I have a little bias? Yeah, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting. And he seems a good dude. He's every, every run in I've had with Justin, he's been cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Except for that one time he tried to, you know, pitch me rolling the media when he, he was on. Well, y'all said, no, nah, nigga, you said that. But besides that, I've had no problems with Justin, so I'm rooting for him. But if I have to be completely honest, I have not seen consistency from this man since he's, the day he's been drafted. So I have no reason to believe he's going to be consistent for two months. That's so I, I hope, but I'm not – I'm hopeful. I, I hope he didn't, but I'm not – I have hope, but I'm not hopeful, if that makes sense. I probably said that yeah, wrong. That makes sense. But that makes sense. That's, that's pretty much where I'm at with it, man. But um, we'll be back. We're probably going to record next – Monday or Tuesday, because you'll be traveling back from the choice. I don't know what your traveling schedule is like, <sighs> unless you want to do it from. I don't know if you. I don't know if you're leaving the same day. No, well, no, yeah, I'm. A, I'm. Uh, we're gonna go there the Saturday. We'll leave Sunday right after the game. Have a drive back, and then uh, Monday I got report card pickup. So, so we'll probably be Tuesday of next week. Probably be Tuesday. Yeah. Probably Tuesday of next week, and then uh, yeah, and it's Thanksgiving and shit like that. So. Yeah, we're going to have an updated. I'm not going to hold your schedule because of the holidays, but I'll now stay on the show tomorrow. But um, that's all we got for y'all today. Um, you know to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Barber Chat Scott, at Flows Andalini, at Heavy Knife and Hallis, at Barber's Chat Net. Subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barber's Chat Network, man. We've been getting a lot of new subscribers. A lot of y'all like the I'm not going to hold you content. If you're a member of the, subscri- if you're a member of the Patreon, you're getting this episode tonight. If you're not a member of Patreon, you're going to get that sometime on Monday. So subscribe to that so you can get all your shit. And, uh, yeah, man, um, I think that's all we got for y'all. So we up out of here. Seven nights at Hallis, what it is, what it do. This is Bobby Higgum, Curtis Ennis. Know that we've been loyal even when we wasn't winning. A trusted source for the news.